Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Just standing here on the front porch, looking out, beautiful day. Got about 80 degrees happening right now. Trade winds are blowing. Really nice, really nice. So I was gonna talk about temperature a little bit today and, and the temperature of some of our components. So let's go in and see what they're reading. So right here, we're looking at a 500 watt string in full sun. The panels are nice and warm, so it's not producing quite 500 watts. Got about 75 volts coming in, and there's a cloud rolling through. Ambient temperature, about 85 degrees, and well, I was hoping to catch that right at about the, the max, which it was a second ago. So I could give you the temperature of the charge controller. They do run a little warm. And let's see what this MPP T130 from Victron is right now. 118 degrees. So warm to the touch, but they do run a little warm when they're uh, moving a lot of energy. And, th and that is normal. Absolutely normal. Nothing to be worried about. I've had some of you ask me about that before. Of course, right here, that cloud covering those panels, they start to cool off. As you can see, everything's looking good. And if I just touch this, yeah, warm to the touch but not too hot. 117 degrees. And now that cloud has moved away, back into full sun. And there you go, 107 degrees. 428 watts, 81 volts. Not bad at all. And here we're looking at a 700 watt string, pretty much full sun coming in. Those panels drop off a little bit from their uh, full capability underneath that full sun. So 628, they're pumping full. 112 volts on the Victron MPPT 15035. Let's take a peek at that. 103 degrees, 100, yeah, 103 degrees. Not bad, just as it's supposed to do. And that's under full sun. Looking good. And now we'll look at the uh, MPPT 7515, a much smaller charge controller, 300 watts of solar. Got about 258 watts coming in, 260 something. So less than everything else. And let's see what that does. About the same. So it doesn't really matter what size the controller, they all create some heat while they're working. And roughly the same amount of heat. And now we're back in the back and this system is not trying to uh, fully charge anymore. It's in absorption. This is a 500 watt string we're looking at and to hold it at its 14.2 volt absorption and we got 175 watts 84 volts with this 150 charge controller and let's see how that pings so a little less because it's just taking a little less energy now to hold these in absorption the panels aren't opened up fully and that noise 
is the inverter coming on. So as long as that inverter is coming on, let's take a peek at the case of that. Yeah. Not much more warm than it is back here. Looking good. So yeah, 192 watts holding those uh, chins right there in their absorption. And you can see by the yellow light, it's winding down its charge for the day. That wattage will keep dropping. And the charge controller's a little bit cooler than the others. So a lot of you guys have asked me, you know, about the temperature on these things. They've noticed they're warm to the touch, sometimes quite warm, but that's how they're intended, intended to work. And now we're looking at that uh, 700 watt string and let's see how hot those panels are. Full sun, 130 degrees. And it's because of that temperature that we're not pulling the full 700 watts. You know, it was like 630 or something, as I recall when we were looking at it. But, you know, they're pretty hot, and that's why. Now, if it was cooler, uh, you know, the the wattage would go right, right up closer to 700. So, yeah, as the panels get hot like this, they decrease some of their output. Absolutely normal. And we'll give you some baseline. Cat, 96.2. Cat, 94.2. P, you're a lot cooler. What's up with that? And my foot, 90.6. <laughs> So back in the shade and cooling off, uh, yeah, those those panels back there, they're in full sun. And like I said, those uh, two strings in the back, each a 500 watt string going into those uh, Victron uh, 150s. And because they are in absorption, uh, you know, as the time goes by in absorption, the wattage just goes lower and lower and lower to hold them in absorption. And when it's done with that two hour absorption period, it'll basically shut those panels completely off. And it might let in one watt just to, uh, as it settles down to about 13.5. And then it just wants to keep it at 13.5. Uh, and it takes just very little to do that once it's completed its charge. So. Yeah, so those panels are basically shutting down for the day. Uh, these others on a couple other smaller systems, they're still allowing full power to come in. And, and that's how it goes, and especially with the solar panels. You know, the hotter they get in hotter conditions, they decrease their output. And those of you that live in colder climate, as I used to as well, you could be at, uh, you know, uh, zero degrees in full sun and your panels will uh, overproduce their rated value. You know, 500 watts, you might see, you know, 550 watts coming in because they do work more efficiently when they're cold. So there's that to be considered because I do hear a lot of uh, you guys saying, wow, my panels are never uh, producing what they're rated at. And, and it's all about the heat uh, in general. You know, if you're in a very warm climate, a 100 watt solar panel is not going to produce 100 watts. You know, mine are not producing exactly 100 watts today because the ambient temperature is about 80 degrees right now. And then with the sun hitting on it, like you saw with the uh, thermometer we were using, uh, you know, they underproduce. So that's all part of the consideration. And that's another reason why uh, I, I over panel is to do with the the loss of output in these conditions here. And one more thing I'll say about that whole absorption and float uh, setting that we use on those Victron charge controllers. Now, like again, on those back strings with that Chins battery bank in the back and two 150s tied together in a network, 
you know, it's allowing just minimal amount of power to come in and keep that at that 14.2 in its absorption phase. But now if I was to turn on any kind of a load as well, right now, which right now there was nothing uh, running off of that in the back when I showed it to you a minute ago, say I turned on a 500 watt load, it would open those panels up uh, to give you that 500 watts and still keep it at the uh, absorption uh, rate or mode, you know, so it does, it does do that. It opens your panels back up, tries to keep you uh, finishing your absorption phase. And then once you are done with your absorption phase, it'll shut those panels off and then it'll slowly, slowly go down uh, if you're not running any loads. And if it dips below 13.5, it'll start to open those panels back up just to, you know, a few watts here and there, just to kind of keep it there. It's usually at the end of the day when it's doing that. So, uh, you know, and like I said, if you turn something on, you, you wanted to start running something, or you just had something that automatically started running like a refrigerator or something like that, um, it'll open those panels up to do that and keep you in your absorption uh, mode or if you were already done with that the so-called float mode So beautiful day and that's how it goes out here But I just thought I'd uh, touch base with you guys a little bit on temperatures and things and that those charge controllers do get warm to the touch and You saw just exactly how warm they get and that's just normal normal conditions. So Hope that helps some of you guys and gals all right. Aloha. Yeah. Beautiful day. Sitting here watching the power come in. <laughs>